got bait. Thousands of years ago, some prehistoric angler ran out of worms, and he tied some woolly mammoth fur to his hook, and he caught a fish. And he said to his buddy on the next rock, Ugg make lure, catch fish. And his buddy said, Ugg dumb, bait better. Anglers have been arguing about it since the dawn of fishing. Which is better, bait or lures? Let's settle that argument today at least when it comes to catching flounder in coastal bays. Today on Got Bait, it's live minnow versus gulp jerk shad. The kids are team bait. Me and John, we're fishing with lures. Now my special guest fisherman today is John Uckert. He's a former charter boat mate and a local flounder sharpie. Flounder are fascinating. When they are born, they hatch out of the egg. The eyes are on the opposite side of the head. During the first couple weeks, the eyes start moving together and they end up on the same side of the head. At about two years of age, they start reproducing and they can live about 15 years unless an angler like myself or Lenny catches it. We're fishing in Ocean City, Maryland today, but John, where exactly are we gonna try and find our flounder? Well, we're gonna fish up on the flats near St. Martin's River. It's a deep hole in the back bay, uh, there's flat all around it, two to five foot of water, and it drops down actually to 34 foot in one spot in there. And they're coming to the bay here to spawn, right? No, they'll no? spend the summer here and they will actually spawn offshore ah. next fall in the early winter. Uh, they'll fatten up over the summer, develop the eggs and the females, and uh, then they'll go back offshore to, to, to actually spawn. He's taking a rest. Yeah. This is a fluke killer rig. Some people call flounder fluke, hence the name fluke killer rig, and it's a standard for flounder rigs. You just need to add enough weight to keep it on bottom. First, put on a juicy squid strip. Then you find the biggest, wiggliest minnow in the bucket and put the hook through the lower jaw and out the upper jaw. Now, I like to use the smallest jig head possible. This is a quarter ounce here. It's very simple to rig. You just take your lure. Slide it on like so, and you are ready to catch flounder. If you want to target large fish, a doormat as they're called, don't be afraid to use a large bait. Their mouths are really big, and they can inhale just about anything. As uh, summer progresses, a mullet live spot become a prime bait. But you definitely catch more flounder a bait that's moving and one that's stationary. Ah, the bike stopped. We might have gone off of that edge. Woo! Oh, dude! Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Get a bite? Yeah. Team bait strikes first. All right. Woo! Got it. Four plays. I was so stoked to catch the first fish. You can tell just by looking at these fish that they spend a lot of time laying on the bottom. Their camouflage is nothing short of awesome. But don't let that fool you into thinking these fish are lazy or lethargic, because they're not. In fact, these flounder we're catching today, just a week or two ago, they were 30 to 40 miles offshore. That's why I can move my jig like this, and it'll still get hit. But if you want to get bit, You've got to keep your lure or bait close to the bottom at all times. Alright, different stuff. <laughs> You're not going to put down the bag and get back to fishing? I want to sit out of drift because I'm really hungry. Well, David distracts Dad, Max sets up a little surprise. Hot days out here on the bay, you have to make sure you drink a lot. You're perspiring. These sweaty, hot, sunny days. Lenny and the boys take their fishing seriously but not so seriously that they can't have some fun with each other. No, wait, wait. <laughs> <Dude. laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I believe you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I can't
can't believe my dad fell for the minnow trick. I can't believe I fell for the minnow trick. Now Max catches his first fish. Team bait strikes again. Yeah, yeah, bait! I got it, Dad. How's that idea? Is it 16? Um, short. Unfortunately, Max fish doesn't meet the minimum size of 16 uh, inches. He's an inch of an inch short. Oh, sorry, pal. Better let him go. Setting the hook on a flounder isn't as easy as it seems, and Team Bait misses their next opportunity. Just how good are you at setting the hook on a flounder? Let's find out with this quick fishing quiz. When a flounder first bites a drifted bait, should you set the hook A, immediately, when you feel the first bite, B, when you feel a heavy thump, 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 C, five seconds after feeling the first bite, or D, 10 seconds after feeling the first bite? To find out the answer, whether bait or lures will prove to be the winner when you're flounder fishing, join us next time on Got Bait. Got bait? We're back to find out which is better for flounder fishing in coastal bays, bait or lures. Max and David chose to fish with minnows, but John and Lenny are fishing with lures. So far, the bait team is ahead with two fish, while the lures team hasn't caught any fish yet. But before we get back to our contest, Let's have the answer to last segment's fishing quiz. When a flounder first bites a drifted bait, should you set the hook A, immediately, when you feel the first bite, B, when you feel a heavy thump, 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 C, five seconds after feeling the first bite, or D, 10 seconds after feeling the first bite? The answer is B, when you feel a heavy thump, thump, thump. That means the flounder has your bait all the way in its mouth and it's trying to swim away. Dude, really? Gosh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I had a fish like that. Oh, fish on! Hey! Fish on! Look at that! Four foot of water up here in the shallows. All right, Len, right, might be a keeper. What's wrong? Keeper. Catching a fish earns one point, but keepers get two. Two to two. And now the score is tied. Now this fish is a keeper, but I am not going to put him in the fish box. I'm putting him in the live well, because I plan on getting a bigger one and letting this guy go. Hey, you guys, I got an idea. Let's make this a little more interesting. Since it's still a tie right now, what do you say, whoever wins, team lures or team baits, gets to sit back and watch while the losing team gets to wash the boat. All right. No problem with that. Okay. Deal. I'm confident. I'm good. No, come on. We got this, Dave. So you can see we all fish a little bit different. John's style of jigging is a little bit more mellow than mine. I like to give it more action. If you watch Max, you'll see that he gives a little bit of action to his bait with his rod tip. And if you watch Dave, he's just letting that bait sort of slide right along the bottom. That's one of the beautiful things about fishing. There's no right or wrong. There are just different ways of doing it. Sometimes one way works better than another. Dave's style is ideal for the napping angler. Max's style is perfect for the kid who thinks he's gonna outfish his dad. My style, of course, is the best way to fish, and John's is just plain wrong. Gotta go. Oh my god. All right. I don't think it's a keeper. Oh no, he's long and skinny but it's caught on an artificial. That's right, we're ahead, we're ahead. That's not fair, because you said that we Lures rule. 15 and it's like seven eighths. All right, buddy, I'll see you next year. Ooh! All right, Land. Uh, oh. That's a typical size fish you catch, isn't it? Uh, well, it's still worth a point. Yes, it is. No, it's not. You snagged him. Bye, buddy. Ooh. When you hook up a fish, it can tell you a lot about where you need to position your next few drifts in order to catch more fish. What's the most important factor to take note of the moment you get a fish on the line? 
A, water depth, B, water clarity, C, strength of the current, or D, speed of your drift? Sorry folks, we're out of time again. To find out which factor is most important, and find out whether bait or lures will prove to be the best flounder catchers, watch the next segment of Got Bait. Got bait? Welcome back to our quest to determine which is better for flounder fishing in coastal bays, bait or lures. We're answering this question through hand-to-hand -hand combat fishing. After six hours of fishing, Team Lures is ahead with four flounder, while Team Bait has caught two fish. We only have two hours of fishing left, but before we get back to it, let's find out the answer to last segment's fishing quiz. So let's recap the question we had earlier. What is the most important factor to take note of the moment you get a fish on the line? A, water depth, B, water clarity, C, strength of the current, or D, speed of your drift? The answer is A, water depth, without any doubt. While flounder don't scold like some other fish, they do tend to hang out in the same depth zone to feed. So when you get a flounder on the line, it's important to take note of its depth. Four foot of water up here in the showers. And concentrate your fishing efforts there. If the bite slows as the tide changes, start trying other depths. Usually, the flounder will be moving shallower if it's an incoming or high tide, and deeper if it's a dropping or a low tide. Hey, what are you doing with my jig rod, boy? You're a oh, whoa, 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 hey. this, this has bait on it. There's another cut here up there. There's a sandbar between uh, that and us. Okay. May the bait start catching. It's crunch time. The next couple of hours will decide who wins, team bait or team lures. Baby, come on with it. Net. Got it. I'm going to mess up this net on purpose. Oh, great. Come on, buddy. Oh, it's another baby. Artificial oh, lure and it counts. Look at him. Oh, yeah? Well, you get ready to watch the boat, buddy, because we're ahead. Yeah. Yo. Oh, shot is on. Who's up? Is that all the fish or is that Look at that. Oh, Look at that. Nice one. <laughs> Looks like you got dinner there, Len. Pretty fish, John. On our official. Dad, we just had three bites right there. Really? Dave got bit off. I had a hit and Mr. John caught one. Nice. That's hey, a good nice. fish right there. A little over 17. Solid 17. Nice. Put that in live well with the others. I'm going to miss it on Four purpose. Four foot of water again, Len. Four foot of water. Second you one know what? Water. It's not real big. It's snag. He's foul hook. Here he comes. It's tiny. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's foul I'm hook. I'm going to hit it. It's a point. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> it's a point. Those are kicking butt. Boo! What's, oh, oh, what's the oh, score oh, now, Max? I don't know. What's the score now, I Max? lost track. You getting the net line? Here it comes. Nice one. Oh. Yes, sir. Artificial. That's a nice oh fish. Gosh. And John catches the biggest fish of the day. All right, I'm five the half foot, man. Go up there and shout. Way to go. You just had to pick bait. Funny. I'm going to catch something. Thank you for getting that ready for me. I appreciate that. I don't always catch the most when I fish with the Rudos, but luckily, today I caught the biggest. We're getting close to the countdown, folks. There's only 15 minutes of fishing left, and I got the feeling they are going to be washing the boat today. I don't really have a partner. <laughs> Nine, eight, eight, seven, seven six, six, five. five. Four, three, three, two, one. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Artificials. Lines out. Time is up. And our day of flounder fishing has come to a close. Let's take a look at the results. In the last hour of fishing, Team Lures comes on strong. 
Lenny and John hit him hard, catching several more flounder, while the boys go without a single fish. We're going to award each team one point for throwbacks and two points for keepers. The boys caught two throwbacks and zero keepers for a combined total of two points. John and Lenny caught four throwbacks and two keepers for a combined total of eight points. But let's not rush to judgment here, folks, because we haven't considered the hassle factor of these lures and baits yet. Every lure and bait has some level of hassle associated with using it. For example, with these minnow, every time you want to bait up, you gotta get your hands all wet and slimy. I'm giving minnow a hassle factor of negative one. Now these jigs, on the other hand, these are great because I can use them over and over again without having to rebait. But ooh, the juice they come in, this is some smelly stuff. Let me tell you, spill this on your clothes and you'll still be smelling it three washes later. Plus, a day's worth of gulp costs twice as much as a day's worth of minnow. So I'm afraid I have to give gulp a hassle factor of negative two. The final score is Team Lures 6, Team Bait 1. Boys, it's time to scrub. Ooh. Nice one. Okay. I can't believe my own dad and John Uckert outfished me. It's a shame. Lures crushed just like I knew they would. Me and Max, we, uh, we could have won, but we decided to be the bigger man let them win because we, you know, we always outfish them. Hey, hey guys, yeah. do you guys have enough soapy water? I think we're good. Yeah, okay. You got no scrub brushes? I have some more if they need them. Okay. I mean, if there's two more, you guys could help. That'd be pretty nice. Well, you're right, but you guys lost the bet. Lores took the day, you know. We can't help what happened. We could help, but we don't have to. Just wait, next time you guys will be the ones moping. Winning has its privileges. <laughs> Join us next time on Got Bait. Now, John, I know you're known as a local flounder sharpie, but don't you have some offshore experience as well? Yes, that's where I got my teeth, actually, in salt water. I'm uh, fishing offshore. Uh, took the knowledge I learned over 40 years and wrote Offshore Pursuit, which is a book from A to Z, tells you how to catch all the different species. I have that book and I love it. <laughs>